Hello everyone, and welcome back to Deadly Gaming, hosted by me, Deadly, aka Scott, aka Deadly Canuck, and all the other monikers that I go by. Uh, we're back again with our Civilization V playthrough. Well, as you can see, our, our scout is in the middle of being attacked. Uh, we took a little bit of damage. The brute actually took a lot of damage too. Um, I rewatched uh, parts of my uh, playthrough that I uploaded uh, this weekend. Oh boy. Um, and uh, the one thing I did notice is that while I am explaining things, I'm going to do my best at continuing uh, at being able to continue to have the turns rolling in the background. I think uh, there were just a little bit too many. There was a little bit too many in the way of uh, too much in the way of pauses. Um, I'm now you see there. I had a unit over there and a unit over here. This guy didn't attack me last turn, so I figure he's not going to attack me this turn. If I had moved, because I was beside units, um, I'm getting a, I'm getting a, a surrounding movement penalty. I'm in their area of control. That's the only time a scout will have a movement penalty. Um, is if you start next to an enemy unit and you're moving towards an enemy unit. So either way, I would be moving towards an enemy unit because there's one sitting right here. He's just out of my field of view now. Um, you you take a movement penalty and you can only move one tile. Um, if I, if I had moved here, he, I would have been on open ground, would not have gotten a combat bonus, and he would have attacked me, and probably killed me. If I had moved here, he would have still been able to attack me, even if I was on a hill, I would get a little bit of a combat bonus, but he would have been able to move across the plains and attack me. I moved here, um, here obviously he would have been able to attack me. I moved here, thinking that he didn't attack me last turn, he's probably not going to attack me this turn, and he's not going to be able to move twice in the forest. So that's... That's the decision I made. And that's the kind of thing that, you know, early on in the game, that type of uh, unit behavior is probably not going to be immediately apparent to you. Um, but as you as you move on and as you uh, gain experience in the game... Oh, well, look at that. Uh, this guy proven me wrong. He was a little bit more aggressive, but as you can see, this guy couldn't quite make it to me. Uh, so when I'm deciding now, I really am wanting to just keep this guy alive so in my decision now moving here is moving away from both of them and i'm going to continue moving and then my idea now is i'm going to have to circle back if i want to complete the circle around uh last episode now i'm going to be able to talk to you about uh, culture but last episode i said that i'm going to want to start a city here just out of safety i disagree with past scott present scott is thinking right here uh, you're next to the coast. We need a coastal city going uh, next to a river. You get certain bonuses for being next to a river. Um, we're only three tiles away, so it's really not going to be that big a deal. Uh, in fact, three tiles away is the minimum that cities uh, need to be uh, from each other in this game. And if I go into my city, I'm going to be able to immediately purchase um, the tile. Or, or I'm going to be immediately purchasing able to purchase uh, yeah i'm going to be immediately able to purchase the tile that has truffles on it i could do that here and start purchasing tiles but there's nobody around me so i'm just going to let my culture naturally um, progress as you can see uh, our culture per turn has over overlapsed the uh, denominator here and that means we get to adopt a policy so let's open up the policy trees here mm. The first policy tree that I've always gone down, I've played around with tradition, I've played around with honor, liberty is the best bet. It always, to me personally, liberty is always the best bet. Simply because I adopt the tree, the next time we reach the denominator, which is going to be 30, uh, we're going to start being able to go down these paths. Uh, this one right here gives you production bonuses in every city. Once we get this, it gives you a free settler as well as boosts your production of settlers. So we're going to be able to found more cities more quickly. And this one gives you a free worker and increases uh, your improvement, your tile improvement construction rates. And then, and then the bonus for completing everything within this tree. So once we uh, overlap the denominator five more times, we get to choose a great person of any type. And that means absolutely nothing to you if you're new to the game, but soon it will. Don't you worry. So I figured now would be a good time to explain uh, the other types of uh, 
uh, what else is up here? Um, we'll get to tourism later on. That's sort of a down the road thing. We don't really have a uh, powerful religious faction um, as Egypt in this game. Uh, so we're probably not going to be too in seeing too, too much of the faith aspect of the game. Uh, right here is what I want to talk about. Excess happiness. So I have four excess happiness. Um, at the end of the turn, that four is going to be converted into this, which contributes to my golden age. As you can see, it comes up, it comes up right here when I mouse over it. Once we reach 500, so if I, if say I have like 20 excess happiness, um, then that's going to go up a lot quicker. And once we, once we reach 500, we enter into a golden age, uh, for eight turns, I believe. Uh, so barbarian encampments down here. I'm going to continue moving this way. We're going to meet our first city state pretty soon. Uh, that checkered border there is the border of city states. So there's going to be one right around here. We're going to, we're going to see who that is. And then I'll start talking about that next turn. Um, and when you reach a golden age, for those eight turns, you get a major per, uh, production bonus uh, in the way of gold per turn, uh, which is useful because you need gold to sustain certain buildings that you build in your cities and uh, to pay your units. Your units cost upkeep. And if you have negative gold, if you go bankrupt, then uh, this research bar over here, uh, if you go bankrupt, uh, it severely affects the amount of research you're producing. And you need research, obviously, to progress in technology. It's just all kinds of bad things. So you don't want to go bankrupt. Um, yeah, the other thing, tourism and faith, we'll get to a little bit later. This is trade routes, which is something else that's new to Brave New World. Once we start building caravans and things like that, I'll be explaining it then. Um, so right here is a weak, weak unit. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to kill it, actually kind of want to be able to but hmm i'm almost considering because the city is going to be able to b bombard that unit so i'm almost considering no i don't really have an option other than coming down here meet manila we are the first empire that's interesting we're the first empire to meet manila uh which means that no other civilization has come across them so that means that this big patch of land could be potentially far away from other people. And there's a lot of nice, nice resources in here. Uh, citrus, obviously, marble is very nice. Lots of bananas. So really, really food, food uh, crazy over here. We got wheat, deer, sheep. So I'm certainly the only thing is like you know making cities down here. That that sort of means that we're going to be uh, able to be surrounded. And I don't always like that. I, I I tend to like hugging the coast and. And like I said in the last episode, having uh, having something that you're able to you're able to put your back uh, your your back facing. So I'm actually gonna cross back over the river this way. Uh, the reason I'm doing that, this unit here, because that's you can still see the encampment. This unit here uh, isn't gonna be able to reach me. They're only gonna have a movement of two. This unit's going to be able to reach me. I'm going to get, they're going to get a negative penalty for crossing the river, and I'm going to get a bonus for being in the jungle. So I don't think he's going to be able to kill me. But my scout is pretty weak, so there's a chance that he will be able to anyways. So city-states. Um, let's talk about them. I'm going to end the turn, and I'm going to talk about what they mean. City-states are basically, oh, there you see, Manila killed him anyways. Um, city-states are... Autonomous little single city states. The only the only way that they gain another city, it's only happened to me once. I got invaded by a city state that was allied to a different civilization that I was at war with, and they captured a city, and all of a sudden they had two cities, which was really funny. But um, basically, uh, they give you little quests. Uh, so this particular one wants me to defeat barbarian units that are invading their territory, which is why I wanted to kill that barbarian so badly, but uh, the, the outcome was not looking like I would kill it, and that would have left me very vulnerable. Um, they have different traits. This one is a maritime one. Uh, certain ones are cultural. If it's maritime, then is it on the coast? Is that the coast down there? Um, there's militaristic city-states, religious city-states... Uh, it's not on the coast. That's very peculiar, unless that's coast. 
but I don't think it is. Um, and they give you different bonuses if you're friends with them. How you become friends is you gain influence by either completing quests. Later on, we'll put uh, a spy in a number of city-states, most likely to um, rig elections so that people that favor us are put into power there. Uh, you also give them gifts of gold. We don't really have gold to spare in order to give to Manila. Um, and really the benefits aren't going aren't gonna to benefit us too, too much at this time. Uh, so we're not going to do too much with city-states early on in the game, but later on they are going to be a factor because if you are allied with a city-state and say it's the nuclear age and we don't have uranium in our territory, but Manila down here has uranium, we're going to want to ally with Manila um, so that Manila can send us that uranium and we can build nukes and nuke the crap out of, oh, you know, Packle or whatever. Uh, I don't have writing yet. Speaking of Packle, I remember now that um, he has an embassy in my capital. I don't have an embassy in his, and I want to fix that, because I, oh my god, there's a lot of barbarians. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Not going to be able to do much with that. Uh, so as you can see, when, when a unit, when an enemy unit comes close to your city, uh, the city has a range of two, and, uh, it's going to be able to bombard that unit. Um, we're not going to be able to kill it in one shot. The only thing that worries me, not really worries me, but bugs me, is that there's another unit up there that's coming down, and there's two units up here. They might start teaming up on my warrior up here. Uh, he is in a very heavily fortified position, but fortifying himself against three units. I totally bypassed that ruins, didn't I? Yes, I did. There's ancient runes right there that I did not pick up. Okay, well, <laughs> chalk that up to being distracted. Look at this. We found Lake Victoria. Um, there are natural wonders all over the world. I'm not sure how many there are in a small, uh, a small map, uh, which is, I believe, the size that we're on. We're not on standard. We're on small. Um, but every time you find one, it uh, increases your your happiness. Uh, and if you have one in your territory and your civilization works uh, it, it gives various bonuses. Lake Victoria, it appears, gives six food, which is, which is a lot of food, actually. Um, and we were just talking about how this is a very food-happy area. Well, there you go. There's the, there's their mascot, pretty much. Uh, okay, so I guess I'm going to move my scout sort of up here. Because this really would be a nice area to start settling it's just i want to have a coastal city so that i can build ships so we're going to bombard that unit the one thing that this game this game is very good at making sure you don't forget to do things like uh it won't let you end the turn with no production happening in your city um it does not do that for bom bombardment bombardment seems to be yeah here we go uh bombardment seems to be the one thing that they leave you on your own for if you forget to bombard units, that's too bad. Uh, so you really got to pay attention to that if uh, you're in the process of being invaded or, or something along the likes. All right, so our unit here, our warrior, uh, he has earned enough for a promotion. Looks like we're going to be able to kill it next turn just in time for that worker uh, to come down and start improving that tile re resource. When your unit levels up, you get various options. Uh, you get various options. Uh, I don't think barbarian units level up, so we're not going to have to worry about them. You can make, you can give them various upgrades like this. This one is going to give us rough terrain. So if we were in better shape health-wise, I would be doing rough terrain because that's where we're defending. Um, but they took out, how much is that? They took out 63 hit points. They took out 63 hit points in one turn. They're not going to be able to do as much damage to me this turn, I don't think. Or next turn, I don't think. Because they are all damaged. So I'm going to, in effect, waste <laughs> this, this upgrade. Because it's going to take more experience to get another upgrade. That's why it's considered a waste. But if I heal this unit instantly, 50 HP, uh, that'll bring me back up to 87 out of 100. And because they're all damaged, they're going to do less damage to me next turn hypothetically um, we are going to edit though and name the unit we're going to call this deadly's distraction 
if I can spell. Oh my god, no, 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 okay, it doesn't, doesn't let us do that. So though, we're going to call this a deadly club. There we go. He's going to be a deadly club. We're going to accept that. And we're going to heal. And then we're going to put him back into a fortified stance. Um, at the end of my turn, because he's in enemy territory, uh, because we didn't move, you have to have your movement points full when you do this. But when you fortify, or there was a little heal option that came up, if you saw it, if you were quick, uh, he's going to heal, I think, 10 HP once I hit end turn, uh, simply because um, he's been fortified with two movement points. Okay, so we're going to adopt a new policy. Because I'm one turn away from completing a worker, an extra worker isn't going to do me a whole lot of good. What is going to do me good is production. Uh, once we get a second city going, then I'm going to want an extra worker. But two workers is really just going to hurt my gold per turn. I'm going to continue moving. Where was that encampment? That encampment was over here. Okay, we're good. We're in the clear. I believe, anyways. I'm actually going to... Uh, you can set your turns up in advance. So I'd, if I did that and then I just kept ending turn, he would move at the end of my turn. I'm not going to do that, though. We're going to move him ourselves. But uh, I want to see if I can un unforget that rune. <laughs> Total proper English time. So as you can see, plus 10 HP. So now he's at 97. These guys should be doing less damage than they did last time. So 18. Okay, 21, that's okay. All right, 28. Okay, so we got some things to do. Uh, first of all, before we forget, we're going to bombard this guy and kill him. Then, as you can see, our happiness is slowly going down. We're going to want to, now that I have calendar, I can build the plantation needed for dyes. However, we're on a marsh. I don't know if I need to clear the marsh in order to, uh, in order to construct a plantation. I think I do. Um, and so you don't get, your worker doesn't get the ability to clear a marsh until you do masonry. So I'm going to start moving them down to the mines. Uh, first, I am going to want to start going down this track though, uh, because bronze working reveals iron. Uh, which is something that you really do want revealed once you start settling your second, third, fourth cities because uh, iron gives you the, abil the ability to, cr to make swordsmen. You need iron in order to recruit swordsmen, and they are much, much more powerful than the cheaper uh, spearmen and... Uh, where do we get pikemen? We get pikemen down here. Uh, swordsmen wind up being much more powerful once you upgrade them to long swordsmen than, than pikemen. If you don't have iron... Whoa, I accidentally clicked that, didn't I? Um, <laughs> if you, uh, we'll, we'll fix that, don't worry. Uh, although archery would be good too. If I just quick archery. Yeah, let's, let's quickly get archery. Um, because building archers is basically, they're a nice little range unit. I'm going to camp them out in my capital, uh, to help, uh, fight off barbarians and whatnot. All right, in the capital, we want to start growing faster. These guys are going to be more concerned with happiness resources in the immediate future. So, no, I am going to build a warrior uh, to help fight off these, these barbarians. Uh, let's move this guy up. It looks like we're not too late, uh, which is very interesting. I think after this, I'm going to start, uh, because I want to build a city here, um, or over here, rather. I'm going to start looking at this location, because uh, I think it was Hiran al Rashid that was in that direction. All right. So, a little bit of a more eventful uh, time. We got some fighting happen. They didn't attack us that time. That's interesting. Okay. Um, let's see what this gives us. Runes explored. We have received 20 culture. That's nice. Okay, that's good. Gets us closer, closer to a settler. Uh, we're going to get a free settler once we get up here because we're going to be able to pop that... Um, I didn't even mean to click that, but yeah, we're going to be able to pop that improvement, which will give us a settler right by the capital, which is going to be very nice. Okay, so being a little aggressive here. Hmm. No, that's not going to kill them. Because these units can't heal, I don't think. 
I don't think they heal. Uh, once I kill the unit and move my unit onto the encampment, that encampment vanishes. That's how you get rid of the encampments. You need to move your unit on. They always camp one on it, or usually do anyways. So you need to uh, move on, and then they'll stop spawning. But these guys aren't going to heal anytime soon. But it doesn't look like my guys healed enough uh, to kill any of them. Looks like they all have a sliver of health health remaining no matter who I attack. So we're going to leave him fortified. Uh, unit still needs orders. This guy needs orders. We only moved him one tile. Okay, so let's start moving you down this way. But that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed. I'm going to continue recording and record the next one for you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.